Yo, 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 homies, it's your boy, your boy with his 16 inch, and I'm here to show you the gaming, the gaming performance of these 16 inches of glory. And I gotta say, I love it because it's got lots of fans. Woo! Fan noise city. All right, one thing you gotta know is that the bootcamp drivers are out and it includes Radeon Pro graphics, workstation graphics, so it's the blue ones, not the red ones. So this is the workstation drivers, which means for gaming, it won't be as performant. Maybe in a couple of months, we'll get the red ones from bootcampdrivers.com and things will improve. There are some issues with the resolutions. If you try going any lower than a maximum resolution, so you can't actually change the resolution. It always needs to be the max one. You'll get black borders on the screen. So again, getting better frame rates is more of a challenge. Another thing to note is that the fans do ramp up severely. And I checked out the CPU usage and the CPU, it was getting starved. It was only getting around 10 to 15 watts. Interestingly enough, the CPU is actually going 2.2 gigahertz, 1.7 gigahertz. It's going really, really low. The temperature isn't high. I feel like it's just being starved maybe. It's during gameplay sessions, so maybe the GPU is using too much of it and the solutions in the past where you could use Turbo Boost, disable that, or uh, use Throttle Stop and lower the TDP. That seems to not work in this scenarios because pretty much you gotta play at maximum resolution. So maybe the only alternative, I guess, is playing it on an external display and you get a better gaming performance. But the good thing is, it does still throttle the same as it did on the 15 inch. All right, this is with Bootcamp version 7745. So this is Windows 10 running on the 16 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar, 16 inches. So next up, this is Time Spy 3D Mark. Let's see how good this 5300M. The great thing about 3D Mark is that it makes the fans go wild. So right now at this stage, we're getting around 23 frames a second. And that lady is a bit lost. So we're finished here and we got a graphic score of 3000 and a CPU score of 4700. All right, here we're getting around 30 to 40 frames a second. One of the issues with some of these games and the blue drivers, I guess, is that you actually can't change the resolution. So just say I wanted to lower it here, apply changes, look what happens to the screen. So you can't actually change the resolution. It always needs to be the max one. And so what you need to do, I guess, is to lower the quality. So just by turning off anti-aliasing and V-Sync, we're getting 50 frames a second now. So you can play this game, but this is a game from 2013. So this is Hitman 2, and it also has that issue where you need to use the maximum resolution only. Oh, of course, it is beautiful as hell. So this is 30 frames a second, 27 frames a second. Other games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Right, this menu scene, we're getting 25 frames a second. It's not really using that much CPU wattage on this screen. But the great thing about this one is that it's well programmed. So if we go into graphics, we can actually change the resolution here. Let's go 1080p. And look at that, it didn't mess up the whole screen display. So a game like this, you can get to play with cool fans and a good performance. Let's see how fast we can go with the maximum resolution, however, the default settings. It looks gorgeous and beautiful, maximum resolution, but we're only getting, we're only getting 19 frames a second. Two options here, we can reduce the texture filtering, but what I'm gonna do instead is change the resolution to 1080p. So right now, 1080p maximum quality, we're getting 36 frames a second. Interestingly enough, the CPU is actually going 2.2 gigahertz, 1.7 gigahertz. It's going really, really low. I'm not sure if it's being deprived of energy because the GPU is really kicking it. Because you can see that the CPU is only using nine watts of power and it's going below the base frequency. The temperature isn't high. I feel like it's just being starved maybe. This is King of Fighters, and let's go 1080p, see what that looks like. And unfortunately, we got that big black bar, so you need to always use maximum resolution to be guaranteed success in games. Okay, frame rate, we're getting 55 to 60 frames a second. So it is running really fast. Yeah. All right. 
that was sexy. Right now, over to the world of 3D Studio Max. And this is just a basic model. I mean, not much going on here. Seems to be very responsive. The fans are very quiet during this demo. And this is a really low poly model anyway, so I expected this to work. But the good news is that it's very responsive, nothing going wrong, and the fans are very quiet. And finally, this is a Plague's Tale. Probably the, one of the best games ever made. If you haven't played it, make sure you get it and play it. So this game is well done because when you change the resolution, you can actually still see the screen as another that black borders. All right, so by default, you're getting around 19 frames a second and that's uh, not good enough to play. So I'm just gonna change the graphics. All right, so in Plague's Tale, we're getting 48 frames a second when we switch it all the way down to 1050p and that's uh, playable enough. It's not mind-bogglingly different to the experiences I've had before on these MacBooks. So you're gonna really need an external monitor on eGPU to get the most out of your gaming and the fans are on maximum. Very, very loud. What is this? This is Fortnite. The most amazing game you can get on MacOS. Probably the only game worth getting because it's free. One thing to note is that I'm just in the lobby area waiting for my match to get started and the fans have actually gone on max. You can see right there, 5,273 RPM. And this is just in the menu. Settings. By default, that resolution is 1120p, 60 frames a second. You know what, I'm gonna make it unlimited to see what our limit is. Boom, rack. Show FPS is on and VSync is off. So the default settings, let's see what we get. So frame rate wise, we're getting between 40 to 70 frames. I'm just waiting for my friend to figure out the world. Look at that beauty. Look at that fire, wow. But let's see how beastly this beast mode can get. Okay, we, we are in an abusive relationship right now. Everything is epic, maximum resolution, unlimited frame rate, no VSync. Oh la la. 19 frames a second, which to be honest with you is really good. Imagine the best settings you can ever get with the highest resolution you can ever get and you're getting 19 frames a second. Well, if I look up to the sky, 21 frames a second, so you can get slightly more. Look to the ground, that's the most amount of frame rate you're getting, 25 frames a second. Epic, put that on your advertisement, Apple. It's improved. You just have to look down on the ground. But yeah, that was the Windows the gaming, the amazing experience of the MacBook Pro 16 inches. I gotta say one thing, whoops. Check this out on Windows, listen to the old one. So it sounds very tinny, especially when you compare it to. So actually, the default native Windows sound drivers to me, sound a lot better than on the Mac, because on the Mac it feels like it's a bit too artificially bassy. Whereas the, sp the speakers are naturally a lot clearer than the 15 inches version without going a bit too mental like they do on Mac OS. Now I know you guys want to know is does it throttle in Windows. And what you're gonna see right there is 89 watts of power. So it's really chugging it right now. 84, 100, 85, 100. Look at this figure over here. So right now it is thermal throttling. And to modulate that, it's bumping the power between 50 and 60 watts up and down. This one jumped to 70 to 50. I've seen it drop all the way down to 30 previously. And it's not throttling crazy like before, like the original i9. So it's doing a good job here. Still at 100 degrees, 88. So it's about 10 degrees of temperature modulation happening, but you can see the lines are squiggling up and down. Our test is done and we got a score of 2,600, which is actually a similar score to macOS. And if we run it a second time, it eats in 80 watts, then drops down to 78, then drops all the way down to 50. It can't handle that turbo for as long. But the great thing about this performance run is that you can clearly see that it's not 
throttling below the base clock speed of 2.6 gigahertz and this is the base i7 model so it's gonna be interesting to find out how the i9 performs all right guys hope you guys enjoyed that amazing show of the macbook pro in action gaming 3d studio max sim bench what more could you want nothing nothing <laughs>